10, Spencer Nick Collin and Dylan, happy to have you with us. We're now joined on the phone by head coach for the Hedgesville football and girls basketball team, Matt Faircloth. How are you doing today, Coach Faircloth? Good, sir. How about yourself? We're doing great. And uh, three-week period here coming to an end. You're coaching two teams again this year. It's about a year ago that we had you on after the announcement was made that you took over the girls' basketball team. Uh, but first, we'll talk football here, and then we'll get into girls' basketball. What's the three-week period been like for your team this year? I know there's been a lot of camps that you guys have been to. Yeah, I mean, it's been good for us. Uh, a lot of new faces as far as kids that have been in our building that you know elected to come out this summer and, and be part of it so getting them into you know our culture and getting them you know sped up on everything has been really good for us um and then we've been to William and Mary uh went down and competed in the 707 there and then we were up at Pitt this past Sunday where we competed in 707 and the big man coach um obviously you know getting a lot of practice time in uh, have to replace a few guys like you do every year. What do you What do you think will be some of the strengths of your team heading into next season? Well, I mean, the, the good thing for us is we got a lot of guys' experience over the last two years uh, to be able to step into to spots of guys that we need to fill. I mean, losing Jackson Ruess, the quarterback, that's hard to replace just because, I mean, that guy was a gamer, man. Like, it's hard to find – uh, Jackson Ruess, but you know Dalton came in in big situations for us last year. Uh, he's got a lot of experience under his belt now, and you know he's he's looking pretty good here in the summer. Uh, he's bigger and stronger, and uh, arm looks really really good. Uh, you know we got to replace Tanner Matthew at receiver, but I mean we've we've been developing guys like Nate No, the Ian Wolfs, uh, the Brett Pedersons, and and the Essen Allens to be able to take take over when those guys leave. So for us. You know, out there, I think we'll be okay. And then we got to replace Eli and Drew Milton on our line, which, you know, we got some guys that are ready to go there. Uh, Coach Dylan Bishop here. We saw you guys kind of evolve into more of a passing team this past season with Jackson Ruess in his senior season. And I know a lot of times you'll see football teams kind of adjust their scheme depending on their players. Now we'll see uh, now that Jackson is out and you guys got guys like Dalton Harper on the team now. What can we expect? Uh, what are you looking forward to right now? What's your idea for what this offense is going to look like? Is it going to look like more of last year's team, or is it going to be an adjustment period based on what your player situation is going to be? I mean, I think for us, I mean, we, we got a we got a really, really, really good receiver in Demonte Martin, and you know, for us, we got to get in the ball. Uh, and I mean, teams are going to bracket him and try to take him away, but you know, we got guys on on both sides. Of, of the offense that can really go out and get football. So we're, we're not going to change much. Uh, we've added some new wrinkles to stuff to try to get guys, you know, mismatches here and there. But what you've seen last year, I mean, we're going to stick with just because we return, we return a lot uh, coming out of that offense. Coach Faircloth, Colin here. You've done a complete 180 with your program, it seems like. As a few years ago, it was winless, then on the verge of playoffs, and finally last year making the playoffs. What's the next step or stride that you want to see your program take this season? I mean, everybody asked me why I took Wheeling Park game one. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to take steps to build this thing, but sooner or later, we got to jump into the pool. You know, we got to jump into the deep end, so... Right now, we're gonna we're gonna open up with Willing Park game one, and I think that's an opportunity for us to to see how far we we've, we've come in the last three years. Of you know, now we're gonna open up game one with you know a premier top ten team in this state. So for us, it's you know we we said last year playoffs are bust. We've set a standard now. We want to get in, but now we want to now we want to go further. We want to go see if we can win this thing. And, Coach, you probably knew this was going to be brought up at some point in the conversation. You're getting two transfers coming in at least that we know about at least. What uh, have you seen from them so far in the practice that they've been able to get with your team? Uh, I mean, you know, Aiden, Aiden, I've known Aiden since he was seven years old and playing in the youth leagues and playing travel football. And, you know, he's played with Levi and Jake Young and all them. So, for, for me, I knew we knew what we were getting when he elected to come here. He's a great kid works hard and you know since he's came here he stepped up into a leadership role you know him and him and Levi compete every day and I think that's really really good for both of them um and then you know Gavin Gavin's a quiet kid but he goes out and he grinds and works and you know he, he's got the ability 
and I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people don't see it when he was at Berkeley Springs. Uh, I think you're getting ready to see what that what that kid can do. What's it uh, been like dealing with the new transfer rule in terms of not knowing, I guess, who's going to necessarily continue to play at Hedgesville and and who you might have to see when they come in? I mean, it's uh, I'll tell you this. You know, it, it's been crazy. Uh, you know, me and Coach Church were talking about it the other day. It's, it's you know, guys just show up. like, And that's the crazy part is, you know, they're being told, if you want to go to this school, all you got to do, go show up. They're get you enrolled on the open enrollment, da 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 I mean, there's kids coming out of everywhere, and we got to keep running them off in, until they've done the proper channel. So I think there, there's got to be more guidelines. There's got to be, you know, bigger things for these guys. Like, before they come, they got to, they got to know what they're doing and doing it the right way because, I mean, it's been, it's been crazy around here the last three weeks, of, you know, just, just people showing up. And us having to run them out, it's it's just been crazy. Uh, Coach, we saw just recently that uh, Xavier Kirk, uh, your play, one of your players from last year, has decided that he's going to pursue basketball full time instead of uh, playing football for you this year. Uh, do you have any opinion on that and his, uh, you know, what you see from him going forward in basketball? I mean, I, I've known X a long time, and you know, he came and talked to me, and you know, sometimes when you you know, sometimes you you want to be selfish and you say, you know what, you, you try you you don't want to you don't want to be too selfish to where you talk a kid out of doing what he truly wants to do. Um, so for me, it was it was never talking him out of not, you know, just focusing on basketball. It, it was if if that's what he wants to do and that's where he sees himself going forward. Uh, I told him that the day he came and talked to me, I fully support him. You know, it's. I'm, I'm selfish, and I'd love to see him on the football field helping us out. But at the end of the day, you know, that young man's passion since I've known him, you know, coming out of the middle school has always been, you know, basketball. And he's really, really, really good at basketball. He is. Um, you know, last year he didn't really get a lot of opportunity to, to show people. But I think now with, you know, uh, our basketball program graduating all all the five of those seniors that really uh, led our program. I think now he is going to take on much more of a role, and he's going to have to be the guy. So for me to be selfish and tell him, hey, no, don't do that, you don't want to do that, that would be wrong of me uh, just for the simple fact of that young man sees himself going to the next level and he's got aspirations of playing it at a high level. I'm not going to be selfish. I support him in everything he does. And I told him down the road if he ever elected to come back, you know, I, he's a great kid. I always take him back if he elects to come on back down the road. Coach Faircloth, you mentioned earlier that you guys will be starting the season off against Wheeling Park. Who are some of your other non-conference games that we'll get to see this season? Uh, we got open up Wheeling Park, uh, and then game four, uh, we're at Herbert Hoover. You know, uh, runner-up Double A last year return a lot. They're going to be really, really good. They just picked up a running back all out of Riverside that is an absolute animal. Uh, so we're, we're there. Uh, we picked up Liberty out of Maryland, uh, who had a really, really good year last year. Um, and I mean, we got Kaiser, and anytime you play Kaiser, it's going to be a physical knockdown drag-out game. Uh, and then we're at Hampshire game three, and then uh, the rest were eat back all the way through. And Coach, I want to talk to you a little bit about the scheduling. I think we talked off air a few months ago during baseball season when I saw you when kind of everything had to change when it came to the football schedule with the backloading of the conference games. How did that affect kind of games that maybe you had already scheduled or did it affect it at all? Uh, I mean, when when we elected, well, not we, when certain people elected to flip that schedule around, you know, it took away what we've been doing here for a long time. It's always been us in Washington open up on a Thursday night. That was a prime time for not only our kids here, but Washington's kids to be the, the limelight, the, the big game. And, you know, taking away that, you know, I think it, it sort of, you know, it took a lot out of what we've been doing here as far as scheduling. Uh, and then anybody that schedules high school football knows game one is the hardest one to find. And, you know, me and – uh Miss Van Dyne, we, we called probably over 70 schools 
from all the way from Kentucky, Ohio, PA, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, trying to find a game one. And it just so happened that Wheeling Park uh, had somebody drop them. So we just, it, it was a, it was just the right thing to do. Coach, wanted to go back to uh, one of your newcomers, Ian Fleming. Uh, when the journal article came out that he was transferring, he said in there that he's going to play some running back. Is that uh, going to be a part of your offense this year? <laughs> Uh, I, this is what I'll tell you. You know, his 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 next level is going to be as a walk down linebacker, pass rush guy. Uh, I'll tell you this: I don't think you you will see very many carries in his future here at Edgesville High School. Now, maybe on senior night, maybe one or two, but other than that, uh, he's just going to be a defensive guy for us going down the road. And uh, coach, obviously, you have football coming up more recent and more soon uh, to focus on. But after that, it's going to be basketball season once again. What can you tell us about what you're looking forward to this year for the girls' basketball program at Hedgesville? I can tell you it's been exciting in the three-week period. Uh, you know, we've been we've been going at it a few days a week. and You know, we got volleyball girls and softball girls and soccer girls, but so we're trying to split it up to where they can make it to all the, the three-week period stuff. But it's been real exciting here in the three week period. You know, we picked up, uh, you know, probably one of the better at best athletes in the state. And, you know, Gracie Brown's coming out to play. She's looked really good in the three week period. But the biggest thing is we return almost everybody on our roster. And that's the key for us is in order to build this thing, we got to have retention of what we have. And, you know, Olivia Cooper's back, uh, Jasmine Brown, Maggie Boyer, uh, uh, Yates, like there's so many girls that we return that are going to be able to give us minutes and, and have experience now in what we're trying to do. I think this season for us, uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, I don't want football season to end, I can tell you that, but at the end of the day, when football season ends, it's going to be very exciting for me to move right into the winter. And any coaching staff changes along in your uh, basketball program this year, or are you sticking around with the same coaches you had last year? Uh, we we picked up uh, uh, Coach Kitch. She uh, she graduated from uh, West Liberty. Uh, she just got done playing there. Uh, she played at a uh, big time powerhouse high school in Pittsburgh. Uh, she's been really good for us coming in. The girls, you know, really have uh, adapted to her, and she's really good with what we're trying to do here. And she's really so far in a three week period, she's taken she's taken the reins on coaching and and started to really see some changes in some of these young ladies we have. Coach, last year was your first year coaching this girls' basketball team, and during the season, talking with you, you mentioned uh, that half, if not more than half, of those girls that came out, it was their first time playing basketball, so teaching them the fundamentals of it all was your main focus of the year. What have you seen growth-wise out of them, though, during the off season? Uh, I mean, you know, now we can dribble with both hands. Uh, they're dribbling with their eyes up. Uh, they're communicating. That, the, the communication part was the biggest one for me is, you know, when you when you haven't played the game of basketball and you're out here trying to, to play the game with four other four other people, if you don't communicate, you're, it's, you're not going to be successful. So for us, the communication part, um, like the other day we did some, some, we did a live scrimmage here, and the biggest thing was the gym with no fans in it. It was probably the loudest we've had it. You know, it was they were talking, they were moving, they were cutting without the basketball. They were they were talking on switches. So for us, it's you know taking over a program where probably over seventy five percent of the girls in our program, maybe even eighty percent, have never played basketball before. Where we were to where we are as of uh, Monday. Uh, it's night and day, and I think this season will show coming up the steps that these young ladies and the hard work that these young ladies have put in, and, and I think it's going to come full fold here in, starting in December. Coach, uh, last year for Hedgesville as an athletic program really had a, a great year. Your football set the tone, making states. Uh, basketball, baseball makes states. Softball had a good season. Volleyball had a good season. How do you get girls basketball to join in on that? And then also for you, you know, you kind of have connections to a lot of the programs. Your sons play multiple sports. So what's that like to see Edgesville uh, have such a great athletic year? And, and how do you hope that continues? 
Well, the, the, the thing with the girls' basketball is they went out and started, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in re- peers recruit peers, you know, and I, I, I'm a firm believer in that. And they went out and they've got some soccer girls balled in. They got some uh, some other volleyball girls balled in. So they're bringing pe- more athletic girls in the gym for us. Um, so we'll be able to do a little different things than we did last year. You know, uh, soccer players, you use them for what they do. They play defense. They move their feet. They're long and athletic. Volleyball girls, they can jump. They can spike the ball down. So I need them to go up and rebound, stuff like that. Um, you know, we're, we're transitioning into, you know, really getting girls in here uh, that want to work. And, and that's like, again, I think the girls, you know, they learned a lot last year. They seen that you know, how far we came from game one to the end of the season. Uh, if you look at it last year in girls' basketball, we didn't play a cupcake schedule. Uh, and for us, I think they went through the gauntlet. They got better. And then I think this off season it made them hungry to come in here and get better. Um, but as far as athletics in the building, you know, Hedgesville, you know, you walk around and, you know, we may not be the most athletic. We may not be the biggest. But these kids out here, they grind, they work, they want to succeed. And when you can get the buy-in in in the entire athletic department, the sky's the limit. And, you know, now that we're, you know, we're willing to share players and we're moving kids and, you know, we're trying to, okay, you know, Jackson's a three-sport guy. So last summer, and I think Coach Church said it the last time he's on, Jackson for three years really didn't dedicate himself to much basketball in the summer. So for me, it was a let's make this schedule out so that the Jacksons, the kids like Jackson and DeMonte and them who, and X who play basketball can get in the gym with basketball and, and perfect their craft. And I think that's the big thing going forward is, is keeping, keeping everybody on the same page and, and making sure everything works for kids so that they make sure that they maximize the potential in everything they do. Hedgesville football and girls basketball coach Matt Faircloth, our guest. Thanks for the time, Coach Faircloth, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right, I appreciate it, folks.